How's it going, everybody? My name is Daniel from Hazardous Entertainment, and welcome back to some more Kerbal Space Program. We are back with the Ares 1 here, and you can see that I've made a couple of upgrades to it. I brought in a new vessel, and I docked it here at the tip of the ship, uh, and I it was basically just a way to bring the Science Junior, which I forgot to put uh, on the original vessel. And then I also brought some cargo here, just some surface items and... Uh, some EVA and repair kits, things of that nature. Some extra struts here that I want to get uh, Adam out here and actually have him apply because this ship is a little wobbly. As you can see here, I, I took an opportunity to go ahead and straighten out uh, the two side cabins. So this ship is in full functioning order now. Every single one of these fuel uh, sections here is 100% is full. Uh, because I, I emptied all the fuel that was in this one. Oh, also we have a new we have a new Kerbal who came with us on the ship Harold. <laughs> Harold Kerman is a scientist uh, and he came uh, as the fourth member of this brave colony. We don't want to waste any time because it's going to take a lot of time to get there. So I want to go ahead and take advantage of some science uh, and some scientific data research. Uh, Adam, can you step out of the vehicle, please? Thank you. Can you go ahead and reach it from where you are? What I want to do is add a strut from here to say here and then add another strut to match on this side. And then I want to do the same to the bottom here, obviously. Okay, and that should help keep us structurally sound on our flight. No wiggle waggling going on. So let's go ahead and put Adam back inside his little home. And let's conduct a material study. And in, what is that, 148 days, it's going to turn into 155 science. And apparently you can do this for science you've already like processed and taken back uh, to the research center. So I'm gonna process this? Yeah, 31 data has been stored. And over the course of 148 days, which it should do all of that by the time we get to Duna, uh, it's gonna, do can I process more science? More than one science? Start research? We stop research. Oh, okay, so I can add a bunch of science to this and then do the research. Okay, great, let's do that. So I think that's gonna do that while we fly. I, I haven't researched too much into that, so if I'm doing that wrong, there's no harm, no foul. Uh, we've just wasted a little bit of time. Okay, let's go ahead and fly this puppy. All right, so let's make our, oh, so, so much debris. Let's turn the debris off, please. Let's make a node. Oh, oh I think we almost got a touching point. Oh. Oh, there we go. There's an encounter. Okay, great. We got a Duna King. We got a Duna encounter. Here we go. And that burn says it's gonna be a 20 minute burn. Yes, there really is the possibility that we will do a long burn. Like it burns so long that I can go make a cup of coffee, come back and we'll still be burning. But the point is that I think if I turn these engines on, I don't think I've turned. Okay, activate this engine first off. Okay, turn the throttle off. <laughs> activate engine and activate engine. And see, now we've got that down to six minutes. So it's still a long burn, but if we were just doing one engine, it'd be even longer. But what I want to do is make sure that our RCS thrusters are, because you can see they're, they're all over the place on this vessel. I want to make sure that they're evenly spread out. So Adam, will you get out of there for me? And will you move some RCS thrusters around? So I don't need them on this anymore. Also, I learned that you, so when we get to Duna, an engineer can lift more than he could on his own if more Kerbals are standing around. So when we get to Duna, we're going to be able to like break a bunch of Kerbals outside and we might be able to take off like the thumper and a couple other things like like the things we don't need on this vessel anymore. We might be able to take off and salvage and, and use for other things. We might be able to build a brand new rocket on the surface. I'm so excited for this episode. This episode is making me very excited because I, I kind of self-taught myself a lot of this stuff that is going on in this episode. All right, so we're going to turn RCS on, and that's going to help keep us kind of with that pinpoint precision as our ship tries its best to, to knock us off course. All right, so at, what is that? What is that going to be? So six minutes, seven minutes, so that's three and a half minutes. Three minutes and 25 seconds, we are going to go for launch. Oh, here we go. Here we go. We're coming up on it. Here we go. All right, boost those rockets. Full blast. Full blast where we're going. And then RCS is going to, uh, uh, see, it's just, it's slightly moving, keeping us dead center on that. It's a perfect system. It's a perfect system. Look at our Apo apps rise. What? I, so, uh, do I need RCS? Let me double check. Let me make sure. Actually, the ship is running pretty good without it. It was. It's not rotating as much. I must have fixed it because when I tested this out, the ship was rotating up a storm. It actually looked kind of cool because it was like spiraling as it went. So, you guys still researching? Yeah, you guys are still researching. Level up crew. So, can I level up my scientists without needing to land back on Kerb? <gasps> could I have a level five? 
scientist on Duna. All right, well, we are on our way. I'll just sit, I'll just sit here for a while. So what can I do? We can read a book. We can read a book. I'm gonna pull up my phone, look at my phone a little bit. Oh, look, let me read the comments. All right. All right, while we wait, I'm gonna read some comments uh, on the last video. John the Bricklayer says, the chaos is great, keep it up. Thank you, John. I, I, I intend to keep up the chaos. It's not intentional. It's never intentional. It's it's all it's all accidental and incidental. So if Penguin says, I recommend the mod docking port alignment indicator makes docking less of a pain in the ass. I agree, it probably does. Um, I may install mods. I'm really thinking about keeping this like purely vanilla other than like a couple of aesthetic mods, like obviously I have Parallax and a couple others uh, installed just to make the game a little more uh, interesting to look at. But in terms of gameplay mods, I kind of want to keep it pretty vanilla. I mean, eventually, uh, if I grow a little tired of things, then I might do some additional mod stuff. I think this game is going to keep me pretty busy until Kerbal Space Program 2 comes out, and I'm really excited for when that comes out. But yeah, I may do mods, I may not do mods, but yeah, I think that's kind of the fun part of this is that the, the docking is such a pain in the ass, but uh, you know, we, we may I may look into that. Gabriel Wilde says, it's so cool to see you getting better at the game. Thank you. I, I, I feel like I should be getting better at the game, but even still, I feel like every time I, I move forward one inch, there's another 10,000 problems in the way. Like, I don't, I don't even know how to fathom beginning to get to like Elu or what was the what's the big one the, the big one farthest out the, the the Neptune equivalent I suppose nub nub bud says the issue with your RCS is it's only on one end KSP is a little dumb with it but try moving a pencil sideways by only pushing the tip or the eraser your RC engines all need to be firing at max to stop it from rotating for the slightest lateral movement yeah I think I fixed it I think is this good I mean I've got because I've got the reason for that is because this has RCS on it, like little thrusters right here. This has RCS thrusters, and now this has RCS thrusters. And I bet I could optimize it even further, but I think this thing moves a little better now. Obviously, I don't need to dock anymore, we're just going to be landing. Uh, but I think as we saw with the, the RCS stable assist, I think it's working pretty well. Alright, Apoeps is getting close. It's not where it is, but I hope we can still get that encounter without much need for adjustments. <gasps> Alright, there it is. There's a just stop! There's a Duna encounter. <laughs> I don't want the RCS to fuck up our Duna encounter. Okay, is that good? How, what's that periapsis at? Oh, uh, yeah, that's... Hey, that's not bad. Okay, that's perfect. That's actually what I want. I want to be about 100,000. All right, so now we're going to warp forward a little bit, a little bit of a ways. How many days? Nine days, 10 days, 11 days. Hey, there's the ship. How's it going? I might actually kill off these two engines just because, look, their fuel is getting lower um, and I might end up killing them off pretty soon. Is a Kerbin day five hours long or six hours long i guess it is i didn't know that. i figured it was 24. all right it's i can't even see it i can't get it with this camera angle come on oh why is it coming on the op what did i i messed something up <laughs> it's coming in on the opposite side was that taking into consideration if i did like a gravity i don't i don't know what i messed up either way we're here at Duna. <laughs> all right how many days have passed 45 days it's been a month it's been a month since jumbles saw home his friends all say he's getting space madness, but I say he's getting space badassness. What is this? Oh, is it because I hit an Ike encounter? Oh, weird. Oh, so I must have hit. I must have actually hit an Ike encounter. That's so. Oh, that's what happens in my thing. We're we're hitting an Ike encounter, and then it turns into a Duna encounter. So that that's just, eh, it's just luck of the draw. Either way, we get we get where we're going. We could always we got way more than enough fuel to fix things. It's all good. Let's watch as our little guy flies, huh? Two hundred days will pass. Man, where's the sun? Where's Kerbin? Is that Kerbin? That's Moho. Hi, Moho. How are you guys doing? How many snackies did you guys bring? Did you guys bring Funyuns? Fritos? Cheetos? Okay, uh, before we do anything, it's been over the days. I want to check our science. So did it, did it process the science? Great, 0.44 science per day. Okay, here we are. All right, we're at, we're at Duna now. Is that Kerbin? Hey, Kerbin, you look like a square. <laughs> we can actually start burning now. Is this going to be a long burn? Now. While this burns, we're gonna take this center fuselage here and we're gonna fill it up with the remaining fuel that is in these last outer tanks here. And that's gonna give us that last bit of fuel. So now these are fully unoperational now. They're just done. There's no more need for them. 10 minute burn. What are we gonna do for 10 more minutes? <laughs> I got, I got, the, I got cool thing. You wanna, you wanna, you wanna see some cool things? I got a cool thing to show you. My, my girlfriend and I decided to do some painting, and so I, I painted a canvas, or I'm working on a canvas right now. Uh, I don't- can you see this at all? It's, uh, it's the Jebediah Space Agency. It's got the mun and, like, a rocket, and then it's got a little- a little me, who's- who's so excited to be out- out in space. When I finish it, I'll, I'll show it again when it's- when it's- when it's all done. Oh, can we see? 
Yeah, we should be able to see. Do you know? <laughs> oh. Oh. Intimidating factor. Oh. Oh, and there it is. And there it is. Our, we're orbiting. Good. We orbited. So, okay. So I'm going to get a scientist out of there. Uh, EVA, Bob. A conduct experiment. 175 science! <laughs> 800 when we process in the lab. All right. Well, here's what we'll do. Can we transmit data? No usable in-range comm devices on vessel. Are you, what about these? Are these not in-range comms? Uh, maybe, oh, it probably just can't, can't reach anything. Uh, okay, well, here's what we'll do. Uh, collect the data, and let's serve some mysterious goo. All right, all right, 70 science. Keep experiment. Uh, so now, if I go inside, if I, if I beat a board, so if I pressed each of these, if I was like that, process in the lab, process in the lab, process in the lab, Oh yeah, so it's going much higher now. 6.2464 science per day. So how do I get that out? Do I just, I guess I just bring it home or I could transmit it in this, in the case of this. Or again, we could bring a small vessel here and send it back. Okay, it's using up, well this battery is at least using up more. I could technically repair these. Repair, <gasps> it repaired. So now, if it, since it's repaired, can he have it? <gasps> he can have it, put it on the main vessel. I don't even care where really. I only brought two EVA repair kits. I didn't know how many. I didn't know if it was like a one-time use thing or or not. Let's see if that's enough to start getting positive, positive positivity while we're while we're doing the science. So now, if that's happening, these should start filling up, right? Still no. Oh man, that science has taken a lot out of this. Okay, well, we'll have to think about that. Either way, we're gonna land. All right, landing time. Here we go. Decouple and decouple. Oh, wiggle waggle. That that was a wiggle waggle situation, wasn't it? So as you can see here, we've got heat shields. We've got landing gear, um, which we could go ahead and actually deploy that landing gear. These aren't going to help us, but they actually could help us. If we, do, if we do start bouncing, they could help us kind of reorient. They're, obviously, I didn't look, look, I didn't account for the fact that I would also end up putting another engine right here. So originally, you can see originally this worked perfectly. And I put another engine there. And now the landing legs are all screwed up. So... All right, now I do want to kick it away. Send it away. Bye-bye. There it goes. It was a good nuclear engine. You got us through a lot, buddy. I'll, I'll remember you always. Guess I could deploy or activate parachutes at least. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't come out. Don't come out. Hey, you guys, stop. Stop it. You guys don't need to come out. Well, at least it worked. It finally worked. We finally got those uh, that action group to, to function. Oh, we're way... Oh, we overshot our target, it looks like. Unfortunately, it looks like we overshot our target. That's okay. All right, everybody, everybody look alive. We're coming in for a landing. Oh, here we go. Oh no, I broke my solar panels. I need, oh God. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, something exploded. That was the nuclear engine, I do believe. We're still coming in pretty hot. Well, some of those haven't deployed yet. Hold on, they're about to deploy. Oh. It's so close to working. It's so goddamn close to working. It's like inches away from landing properly. All right, that's all of them. And they're open. And we're burning. Oh, this might be the golden ticket. Can't save, this might be the golden ticket. Oh. <gasps> that was the golden ticket! <laughs> yeah! Look at that, guys. Hold on, move, move the ball. I can't see anything. Look at that! It's our first station! And again, we're gonna, we're gonna make some adjustments to things. Okay, so I need to do this first. Pull everybody out. Oh my god, are you- Harold, are you to be the first to touch the surface? <gasps> oh, he fell. That's one small stumble for Kerbal. <laughs> Plant the flag. Plant the flag, Harold. <gasps> there it is. All right. The Duna Colony. The future of Kerbal Kind. Oh, oh, live here. And you can do science. Everybody else, get out of here. Get out of here, guys. Come on. There you go. There you go. Oh my god, they're all here. 
So now we should be able to do this. I wanted to, I want to, I want to see if we can fix this up a little bit. So if everybody else is out here and said, they said it's a 60 kilometer radius. So you can move the thumper, get the thumper off of there. We no longer require it. So what, how big of a part, they can't move these, these things, can they? Uh, I might have to do some off camera experimentation on getting the base more sick. Okay, so let's see about this. The problem I have right now is that <laughs> you notice here, I have a bay here inside this bay is our rover. Now, I think the rover will be able to come out. It, it, it should be able to come out. Uh, Adam, can you grab it? Oh, I can grab pieces of it. It's, can I detach it? Is it possible to detach? Because I accidentally attached it to the vehicle. Like, it, it's attached, technically. I mean, I could technically deconstruct it and reconstruct it, I guess. It's not really what I want to do. Well, well, this is why we made quick saves. <laughs> Why does it explode? Why does everything explode? So my game started having like a bit of a, of a, of a shenanigan there <laughs> when I was reloading the save. I don't know. It just started. It freaked out. I think I've had the game open far too long. I've been playing this for, for a long time, doing a lot of nonsense. So thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And also leave a comment down below telling us what you want to see next. But as always, my name is Daniel, and I'll see you guys next time.